All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning or this afternoon. Um, we talked to you today on our webinar, the Nonprofit Guide to Google Analytics. Uh, we're going to give people a few more minutes to begin to continue to join us. I uh, just want to go over some housekeeping things before we do get started. So during the this event, we just ask that you either chat with us in Zoom chat or raise your hand. Um, we'll, we'll get a chance to call on you for some of those questions later on during the presentation. Uh, and as Julian and I are kind of trading off throughout this presentation, we'll be answering some of those questions as we go right in the chat. Um, you can also email us at, or email learn at techsoup.org with any questions or issues you have during uh, the webinar or even after the webinar. Um, we are recording this event. It's being recorded right now. Um, so you can choose to turn off uh, on or off your audio and video so you're not part of that recording. We do ask that as, as we're talking, um, you make sure that you stay on mute as well. Just quick introductions and background on us. Um, I'm Kyle Barkins. I'm one of the co-founders of TAP Network. We are a digital transformation agency. We work pretty heavily with nonprofit organizations. Uh, my background is more in the technology and website development space. Uh, so a lot of this is very, very relevant to me, myself, and my background. I'm joined today with our digital solutions manager, uh, Julian Jirashi. Uh, he's got this is eight years of experience. I think he's got more than that at this point now with TAP um, in digital marketing. But we he's our go-to guy here at TAP uh, for all things Google, all things analytics, uh, and, and many things web. So we're in good hands today uh, as we walk through this. Just some quick background on TAP Network. Uh, as you go through, as you came through this today, as you come through the sites, uh, all TechSoup's different websites and, and blogs and things of that nature, you see a lot of, of you know, different assets that are out there. Uh, from the platform it, it runs on to a lot of the content that gets pushed out. And so a lot of these programs through TechSoup, we partner very heavily with TechSoup to provide some of those services, those programs, that educational background. And we do that same thing um, globally for nonprofit and mission-driven organizations. So anything from digital marketing, like support and services, to custom application development, uh, and then education for these, these organizations Quick agenda for today, um, we're going to go through Google Analytics overview, like what is it, uh, how to use it, or how we use it, and how it can be used uh, to, to drive effectiveness for your organization, how to kind of read some of the reports and some best practices here. Uh, the basics of website traffic, so what it means, what it measures, uh, user behavior and conversion rates. And then we'll, we'll cover some practical applications towards the end, um, you know, how, how can this actually be put into, into practice. So more specifically, how can Google Analytics be, Analytics be used for nonprofit organizations? Uh, it's great because it's free and it's powerful that any nonprofit can use and really get set up and running um, at the base from the basic step, take some basic steps to get it in place so that you can start to uh, you know, track your traffic, measure and analyze how your website's performing, things like where are people coming from and some other uh, events that we'll cover today. Uh, but what's really nice about it too is it's very extensible. So it can really grow with you, grow with your organization. Uh, you can really get a lot out of it to allow you to understand how people are using it and you know what ways to make improvements. So it can really be live like sort of at the center of uh, anything you're out you're putting out there digitally. It can it can really it can get really deep and track things like you know email opens and how emails convert um, back to your website. It can track events like where people are coming from to your website from through social media things of that nature without having to go out there and buy complicated or more expensive tools. And that allows you to make these data-driven decisions so you can increase efficiency and effectiveness uh, and grow your organization, grow your following. So just a quick high-level overview, uh, just if you can answer this in the chat and we'll kind of go over some of these, these results, uh, let us know which of these goals is most important for you or your organization. Is it, and just if you guys can put the, the letter corresponding to the answer, that's super helpful. Um, or feel free to type it out. <laughs> Raising awareness, driving donations, attracting volunteers, supporting your program delivery, building community, advocating for change, uh, or sharing news and updates. Give you all a few seconds to let this to answer that. We're watching them roll in now. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of A's, a lot of people putting in, you know, most of the letters. And I think one of the one of the cool things about Google Analytics is that this really gives you the information to understand how you're doing on each one of these fronts. So you're able to not just say, okay, hey, here's information about X, Y, Z, but you're able to apply that to some of these things. So whether it's, you know, if your goal is to raise awareness, you know, how is your message actually getting out there? 
How are people interacting with it? Um, if you're trying to drive donations, you know, maybe if you tie Google Analytics in with the CRM, you can start to see, you know, how people who you're targeting, you know, maybe have made a donation in the past, how they're interacting with your site to maybe turn that into a recurring donation. Um, how far this information, some organizations are, uh, they provide, you know, new research or new information, how far that's going out, you know, into the world, where people are coming from, and even how, you know, things you've done in the past. It's not just, you know, upcoming things that you're dealing with. But also, you know, as you release more information, seeing how that's, you know, propagated throughout the internet, throughout the rest of your, um, your digital marketing efforts. So with Google Analytics here, you, you get quite a lot. Um, so, uh, you know, on a very basic level, you get how users navigate your website, how they're, you know, where they're starting, where they, where they end up, where they leave your website. You're able to see sort of the paths people take if you're plotting out. You know, we'd love people, you know, when they land on this page to go to these next ones. You can see how that path is actually working. You can also see where people are coming from. So how your, uh, your maybe social media posts, how that's, how that's driving users to your website, whether they're coming from emails or even other refers. Also conversion rate data. Um, that's really helpful for if you're trying to understand um, how, how certain actions are, are being taken across the website saying, hey, maybe we, we just released our new annual report. We want to see you know, exactly how many people are actually you know, uh, converting on this, how many people are maybe filling out a registration form for a program or specific events. Then a big one is mid-funnel campaign performance. So this is something we see here at the agency quite a lot. Nonprofits tend to be really good at you know, stating initially what they're helping with the problem they're trying to solve, then also just making that ask, hey, make this donation, sign up for this program. What a lot of digital marketing focuses on is the people who are maybe on the fence a bit, who are in the middle. So they're, the super enthusiastic people are going to find a way to make a donation, find a way to register you know, automatically. So people who you're trying to reach who maybe aren't familiar with the organization or maybe won't realize how impactful that your organization can be for maybe their specific problem or specific thing they're trying to solve. So being able to understand how that your digital marketing efforts that target those mid funnel people, you know, how, the, how they're actually working, that'll give you the opportunity to use data to inform back on that and make more and more effective campaigns over time. So here, just to sort of jump into Google Analytics sort of uh, terms, we're going to talk a little bit about the installation and then some, some key definitions that are gonna help uh, contextualize the rest of the, uh, the conversation. So we're gonna focus on traffic monitoring and event collection. So we're talking about getting started with Google Analytics. There's really two aspects of it. You have the technical side and the strategic side. The technical side is just a method of actually getting it hooked up, configured, getting it onto your site. So for this, a uh, consultant professional, we here at TAP, you know, help with a lot of Google Analytics setups. They also have a, a fairly robust setup assistance. If you want to get, you know, a, a basic introductory setup going, you can do that as well. And then getting that installed onto your site. I know WordPress offers uh, a, a Google Site Kit plugin. There's other tools, depending on the platform your website uses. It'll allow you to integrate it in different ways. But on one side, it's just the technical aspect of getting that actually data flowing into the platform. Then there's just the strategic side. So it's not enough to just have the information there. You actually need to be able to use it. So understanding what information is going to be the most helpful is incredibly important. Identifying all the touch points that you're doing in your digital marketing and how you want to track them. Um, you know, uh, whether that's uh, putting UTM codes on some of your email things uh, or your social media posts whether it's really identifying how, how often you wanna see people submitting forms, things like that. Figuring out what exactly is going to be the most helpful for you to track and report on is going to be the, the, the second aspect of Google Analytics. So as we jump in, um, we're not gonna to focus too much on universal analytics, which is the old version of, of Google Analytics, just because so much has changed here in Google Analytics 4. So uh, the big thing you wanna know is data streams. So this is a new concept here and this replaces the traditional tracking code that you may have, you know, some advanced setups if you have, you know, a fairly robust configuration already in universal analytics. Now, instead of generating a separate tracking code for each sort of thing you're trying to track, you can set up one single uh, Google Analytics 4 property and include a lot of these data streams in here. So you can do anything from, from apps, websites. And when we say websites, we don't just mean one website. Before, maybe if you had a ticketing platform or a, 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 a LMS platform, uh, you need to set up a, a different Google Analytics property and do some things to sort of set them up. With this, you have one main property, and then you can figure all these extra data streams that allows you to say, okay, here, we want to use this on our main domain. We want to use this on our events platform. 
we want to use this, you know, maybe on a, on a landing page tool. So you're able to combine all these things into one property. So you can only have one data stream per data source, but that's going to be a single domain name, an app, anything like that. So some of the benefits of data streams is it's more simplified. So as I mentioned before, if you were trying to track information across multiple domains, there's some more advanced configuration required. This is all sort of built up into one. and also allows you to contextualize that information um, a little bit better because it's bringing all those separate data streams into one Google Analytics for property. So now say you have a mobile app, you're able to use this and get, uh, get the information right alongside your web performance. And you're also able to control exactly what data you want in your platform. For example, if you have a, a specific website tool that you only want maybe page views on, you don't need to be loading up you know, into the data stream with a whole bunch of extra information. You can just sort of specify, hey, I only want to collect this from this data stream. It also allows you to share data um, a little bit easier as well. So say you're, you're trying to track a, a user journey between uh, your app and your website, this allows things to flow a lot more smoothly. The second event here is events. And so this is the, the main building block that Google Analytics 4 is built on. Before, it used to be a lot of page-based tracking and URL-based tracking. So they'd say, hey, we're going to crawl all of your URLs on your site and start to get information with this. Now, even page views are a type of events. It can be a, a form submission. That's the type of events. Uh, scrolling to the bottom of a page. We'll get into some uh, specific event types later. But these are user interactions with your website or your app that you want to track. Um, it really provides a lot of valuable information when we're talking about how users are, are interacting with your site and engaging with your content. And this is what allows you to measure the effectiveness. So it gives you an ability to quantify that engagement um, and sort of say, hey, we want to see how many people are actually getting to this you know, call to action at the bottom of the page. You have a scroll event that sort of gives you that information. And then you're able to report on how many people are actually you know, clicking on that call to action towards the bottom here. So it is event-based rather than page-based. And so now sessions are composed of multiple events that includes page views and any other sort of user interactions, whether it's video plays, form submissions, or anything like that. Um, it really gives you uh, this opportunity to figure out exactly where you can improve your website. For example, you, could, you might discover that users are frequently clicking on a button that doesn't lead to a conversion, or they're dropping off from a form submission maybe halfway through, they're not completing the form. And once you have this information, you can make these data-driven decisions about how to optimize the website or app. It's really easy to tread water with digital marketing, so you could be expending a lot of energy and not really going anywhere. But having this data to back you up it helps you become more efficient and effective. So we're going to jump into the, uh, the basics. And there's three things we're going to focus on um, right now. We're going to take a look at the website's uh, traffic, user behavior, and conversion rates. Um, but with, with the events just uh, before, if you're setting up custom events, there's a couple of things here that uh, you might want to take a look at. Um, the event category. So this is the, the actual sort of uh, the main events, uh, so to speak, uh, of the events of so saying exactly what kind it is, the action that people take. So this is if you want to track, you know, maybe playing a video, submitting a form, anything like that. The label, this helps you basically keep everything organized on the back end of your site and the event value. Once you start getting into a lot of advanced configurations, you're able to create events for, for almost anything. There are some things where you still might want to use Google Tag Manager, say tracking a specific button or something like that. But uh, Google Analytics 4 really opens up the field to, to collect a lot of this information directly in the analytics platform itself. Yep, and like I say here, uh, we're going to take a look at, at three things, the website traffic, the user behavior and the conversion rates. And so each of these has like a little bit of specific information that I think is going to be, you know, applicable for, for a nonprofit of any size. Thanks, Julian. So the first thing we want to look at is traffic. Um, in Google Analytics and Google Analytics 4, um, you've got a wide range of, of data available for, about your website visitors. It can tell you everything at a high level for like, you know, total visitors on your site, total traffic over time. Um, to get very granular, like where they're coming from uh, and very specific to what pages they're viewing, what how long they're spending on those individual pages, uh, things that you're probably used to if you've, if you've implemented Google Analytics for, but before um, or looked at this, but the common things, and it's just, it's kind of updated, right? Like what, what's trackable and what's seen there now in Google Analytics for. So 
at a high level, this is very useful to see, you know, look at things like campaigns or anything promotional that you're doing. Is it driving more traffic to your website as a whole? And where is that traffic coming from? And where is that, what is that traffic doing when they come to your website? So you can get granular look at things like behavior, um, where they're converting, what events they're taking from there, but it gives you that kind of high level overview. So from a traffic level, um, you can start, then you can get granular to look at things like, as I said, like sessions and page views. And the difference between these two things is um, a session is like a period of, well, I'm not gonna read from this slide. So it starts uh, when a user first comes to your website and they initiate that like first page view. And then it, it stores like everything they do in the next 30 minutes of either activity uh, or inactivity, or it picks over at midnight. So if I come to a website, it'll start tracking me right now. And let's say I walk away and I come back, you know, 15 minutes later, that's one, that's still one session where I'm engaged in and, and taking action across that website. The difference between that and a page view is a page view is every single thing, every single page view that person, uh, that person within that session or all page views as a whole uh, that occur um, when people visit the website. So I might, there might be one session with multiple page views, Google Anal Analytics will show you that, but it's important to understand the difference between these two things as well as like unique users um, across those sessions. So you wanna see, you know, how often did people come to the website? How many people came to the website and what was happening when they came there? So those would be the, the kind of three different levels of metrics there. Just a quick, kind of some screenshots in here of, of how to look at these things. So we can, we talked about traffic and how that, that can be pared down to see things like acquisition, where they came from, uh, and then the engagement, the engagements once they came to that site. Uh, you'll see these kind of common reports that will exist in, in Google Analytics that would break this down by those different columns that you see across your screen. It's configurable, so you can see, you know, kind of any of these different data points um, across some of these reports. You can export it uh, to a, like an Excel file, you can export it to a PDF uh, and be armed with some of these great reports to be able to take back and show like your board to, to prove the effectiveness of your campaigns. But it's all not just about good news. It's also about looking at like what might not be working as well. So if you're you know spending some money on advertising or um, you know putting out some efforts on you know promoting this either you know kind of physically with flyers or banners or things like that or uh, on social media, Google, Google Analytics would also be a great place for you to go to see how these things are working. You know, is that the time you're putting out there really working? Is it paying off? Is it driving people to where you expect it to? So are you running a bunch of social media campaigns, driving someone to a donation page, um, but not getting those um, that those visits, those hits as you would expect? That's what you're gonna really, really see as you, as you dive deeper into things like acquisition and engagement. Then we can talk about user flow. So, you know, if you joined us on our on some of our other webinars, uh, more specific to things like, you know, building a website or website strategy, you hear us talk a lot about uh, user experience and user flow. And that's how someone is, is navigating throughout your website. So Google calls it like a behavior, behavior, behavior flow or behavior flow path. Um, and what's nice in Google Analytics 4 is you can kind of like set your uh, ideal path and see how people are traveling through there, but you can also see um, you know, how, how someone is, is navigating across your site and the expectations of them across this. So in this view, you can see where they started. So that's that first thing on the left side there. And then you'll see where they decay over time. So what's the first step, right? They go from like the first page view, which is the home page, And then they move to like the, let's say in this example, a, you know, a, an apparel page, I mean, they might go back to the home page. This is nice to know where someone comes from and what they're doing when they're, when they're navigating your site but what's really helpful when you're looking at this is planning what you ex is well looking at your expectation how do you expect someone to use your site and then planning uh you know a way to get them through there more efficiently we like to keep people no more than one step away from where they're trying to go to when they when they reach that website when I, for the, the higher converting pages or the more valuable pages so I think you, this is something very powerful and valuable to use when you're planning your navigation or revamping navigation across your website. If you see it's taking someone multiple steps to get to, you know, an important page on your site, that's a great, that could be a prompt for you to move that into the navigation. So now they're one step away, or it might even be a prompt to, to add a call to action or something like that to your homepage or to 
common pages throughout your site to drive them you know, one step away from that. In addition to these, uh, these four traffic type, these four main traffic types, we also have these two other traffic types um, here that you see on the screen. So we have direct traffic. Uh, this is just what comes to your website when you type in, like someone types in a URL. Um, there's organic traffic. So this is like all the common stuff that was in Google Analytics before. Uh, organic traffic is going to be when someone searches for you in search results. Uh, how does you know they, they click on that link in the search results drive your website? That that's like an organic traffic uh, organic session. Uh, then there's referral traffic. So this is when somebody comes to your site from another website. So if you've got like your link out on somebody else's blog, um, sometimes you'll see social media traffic. Social media traffic will, will show up as referral traffic as well. And then there's paid traffic. So this is stuff that comes through paid advertising, it's like Google ads or like social media ads or anywhere that they can track um, like an advertising campaign back to driving that user to your website. Uh, as I said, there's two additional ones now. One is display traffic. So this is people that have seen a display ad. So there's a cookie that shows up with a display or a, a tracking good that shows up with that display ad. Um, and then they can say this drove that that session to the website. And the other is just other traffic. So that's like traffic from other sources that we that Google can't categorize or there's not tracking code you know, that's in there that's a lot, that will allow them to see where do they come from. So that could be stuff like if they clicked a link in like a PDF document or like a, uh, a Word doc or something like that that you shared. It could be things like email campaigns um, or other kind of places like that. But it's important to understand um, you know where that what we said where that traffic is coming from so what's driving that traffic this can also be this is a little bit more advanced but this could also be a cue that something might be set up incorrectly you might have incorrect you know trap or incorrect tagging uh, across your google analytics property if you're seeing a lot of direct traffic or referral traffic coming from your own domain that's usually a cue that something's set up incorrectly so it's like misreporting that type of information to you um, sometimes that'll happen like if you have to like a subdomain somewhere or a separate domain that's driving them and that's getting logged as direct traffic or logged as or sorry logged as referral traffic uh, but it really shouldn't be it should still be internal traffic and that's one of the nice things you can get set up better through uh, Google Analytics for so what would as I started to talk through in the behavior thing um, applying that information you, you that you glean from knowing wh where your traffic's coming from and how people are behaving on your website can really help you optimize your CTAs, your calls to action, and understand whether these calls to action are driving traffic to those pages you want them to. So calls to action in, in digital marketing, so in your emails and your, your social media campaigns and your videos, things like that, are they driving traffic to the right places? And then looking at things like display traffic to understand, was there did someone see a call to action in a video, not click it, but end up on your website uh, anyway, and then that gets kind of like lumped back into that display traffic. Um, are there configuration errors I was just talking about? Like, so are they either getting four or four errors after they view a certain page? So if you see someone's kind of going, going from home page to another page, like maybe a donate page, and you see a bunch of four or four errors after that, that can be seen through Google, Google Analytics or the configuration error I was talking about where it's incorrectly giving, you know, direct or referral traffic to your existing website, your existing URLs. Uh, it'll also help identify if, if your copywriting is is performing and are you getting engagement like on those social and email channels, uh, but not seeing that traffic coming back to your website. So you're seeing if it, you know, you don't have a strong enough reason to drive them there. You're not leaving, kind of leaving them wanting something more, wanting them to learn more by coming up to your website and, and converting. And so we're going to take a look at user behavior now. So web tra website traffic is really helpful for understanding how your, your website is performing. But sometimes when you're dealing in those large numbers, it's hard to you know, identify issues that maybe a single user might have. So the numbers may say, hey, everything's looking OK you know, across, the, across the site as a whole. But when we really look at how users are interacting with the site, that may uncover you know, either new issues or new opportunities to find, find more information. So in order to jump right into it, we're going to be talking about events again. And so, um, Kyle, if you could bump me to the next slide. Yep. So here, uh, is, this is really identifying you know, uh, new insights and in how users are interacting with whatever sort of uh, uh, data stream you have set up. So by choosing the right events to track, this is going to help you understand exactly what these users are doing. 
So if you're setting up, say you have a large uh, resource platform and you want to find out how many people are downloading um, you know, some of the one sheets you've created or flyers to promote certain uh, events, having them set up, you'll be able to see, okay, here people are able to get to this page and they're able to download you know, this resource. Having the, the file download set up is really helpful here. Um, and really, if, if you're trying to figure out uh, in that you know, traffic flow that, uh, that Kyle just showed, uh, being able to understand if people are on a certain page, are they getting to the, you know, the, the bottom level pages that we want, that we're, we might have these you know, specific conversions marked in. So when we're talking about the kind of events that we can use to track user behavior, there's a couple that are built in. The first is the automatic events. So these are things you just load up Google, uh, Google Analytics and they're already there. So you have the page view, the scroll and video engagement. So somebody click, you have Google Analytics installed and they view a page, no uh, additional configuration is going to show up there. Uh, somebody's, you know, it's, I think it's set to 90%. If you're the scroll bar gets to 90% uh, to the length of the page, it's going to mark an event for that. Or somebody hits uh, a play on a video, that'll be automatically configured. Then they have some things that breaks out into, you know, these recommended custom enhanced measurement events. Um, uh, recommended and enhanced measurements are things that are going to uh, uh, pull in here. And um, they're going to give you know, a lot of additional information here that you might not get, or maybe more useful uh, beyond just a simple configuration. So say you have a, a e-commerce portion of your site, there's a lot of events that are installed here that allows you to sort of see how people are interacting with uh, the carts, whether they're viewing uh, specific items or anything like that. That requires a little bit more of an advanced configuration, but really getting them set up is going to help you in the long run by being able to really under understand how people are, are, are using that section of your site. And here, uh, the enhanced measurement events, these are things like, hey, how many times are people clicking a link that takes them out of your website? So always a good rule of thumb to have you know, those things open in a separate tab so that people, you know, if they're looking to engage with an external resource, they're able to sort of you know, have the tab with your website still on there. So they don't have to you know, hit back. You, know, you might lose out if you don't have that. But maybe you just want to see, hey, uh, we, we collect a lot of you know, uh, resources, maybe community resources, and we direct a lot of traffic to other people. Why don't we sort of see how many times these outbound links are being tracked and be able to sort of report on that. Maybe if you're looking to find a new partner um, to, to, to partner with, you'll be able to say, hey, we drive this much traffic to our, you know, our, our external partners on a monthly basis. Just give you more data points to, to come up with more creative things to do. Then you have custom events. There are some things you can do uh, to, to modify specific things. Say you want to track how many people are, are downloading a specific file. You can create a custom event to say, hey, um, show me every time somebody has done a file download event, but then customize and say, and the file is downloaded is our annual report. Be able to set that up. There are still some use cases where you're going to want to use a tool like Google Tag Manager that allows you to sort of uh, track buttons by IDs and things like that. Um, but I, I would imagine as Google Analytics 4 is still kind of you know getting new features and changes every day um, that, that's coming down the line, um, in, in my personal opinion. Um, so this may change over time, but uh, the vanilla platform gives you quite a lot of information uh, right out of the box and allows you to sort of configure uh, some more advanced things as well. So now we're going to take a, a, a quick, you know, uh, look at bounce and exit rates. So th these are two separate things, and these are really important to understand. This is when people stop interacting with your site. So it's not enough to just, you know, once they make a conversion or you store an event about them, that's helpful information, but you also want to see when people say, all right, you know, I think I've gotten everything I need to get uh, from this organization right now, for good or for bad. So um, bounce rate measures the percentage of single page sessions, and exit, exit rate measures the percentage of sessions that end on a specific page. So, for example, a bounce rate might be they click on, you know, Google search result, they see your site, and then they just, like, look at it, and they, they don't do anything else. They don't fill out a form. They don't scroll anywhere. Um, or they can scroll on the page, but they don't, you know, click anywhere else. There's not a lot of user interaction going on that. That's going to be a bounce rate. You want those to be low. You want, once somebody's on your site, you want to have them hooked, whether it's with, you know, uh, information, calls to action, something like that. You want to be able to uh, make sure that you're able to engage your, your users. Exit rate is really, um, allows you to understand how people, how and where people are, are interacting with your site and saying, okay, now I'm done. So, this is might say a lot of people, maybe they're gonna end on the, the, the thank you cart page if you have an e-commerce portion of your site. Or it might say, hey, after they filled out a, a event registration, um, that's the page where they're like, okay, I'm closing out. That's where you can sort of understand, hey, maybe we add another call to action on this page. A lot of people are ending right here. 
maybe we can get them to sign up for our newsletter. Maybe we can get them to engage with, you know, a, a on-demand webinar or something like that. Being able to identify um, what exactly is going to be uh, the, the areas you're going to want to focus on. So it also gives you some information for things that might be wrong. A high bounce rate may indicate a problem with your landing pages, and a high exit rate may indicate, you know, there's an issue with a specific page in the user journey. They might not be going all the way down the funnel that you've planned out for them, spend all this time on this nice user journey, and people aren't getting past a certain point. This is where you're able to understand, hey, this is where motion's stopping. How can we address this? So you can really identify the areas of your website or your app that need optimization. That's going to improve your, your conversion rates. That's going to lead us right into conversions. So events are the, the main building blocks. And this is really going to uh, turn into conversions quite easily. So on a simple level, a conversion is just a special kind of event. You can mark any, any sort of event you'd like as a conversion, whether that's a form submission. That might be one. It may be hitting play on a webinar you've, you've posted on there. It may be downloading a sheet. Whatever you'd like, you're able to set that as a conversion. And that gives you a, a easier way to view the most valuable user interaction on the site. So because everything in Google Analytics 4 is now in events, that just gives you uh, more opportunities to turn more things into conversions. If you're trying to raise just an awareness campaign, maybe you would even consider scrolling to the bottom of a page of conversion. It may not be the most accurate or helpful conversion for you, but uh, Google Analytics 4 is going to allow you to do so. So uh, just figuring out what's going to be the, the most impactful information to share, it's usually going to be for people outside the marketing department, maybe a board or, or you know, executive director or something like that, being able to understand Hey, here's all the all the people that we've we've been able to interact with. Here's the the high level conversions we've identified, and here's how many of these we generate on a weekly, monthly basis, something like that. So now we're going to take a quick half time. So we just thrown a lot of information at you, and definitely compared to uh, Universal Analytics, the old version of Google Analytics, uh, quite a lot is different, and there's really just a fundamental uh, change in the way that Google Analytics is handling things. Um, if it's any consolation, uh, the, the complexity of this platform is directly tied to its usefulness. So the changes they've made uh, gives more opportunities to understand data in a, in a simplified way, if you can believe it. Um, but that does not sort of reduce the fact that there is a lot to learn. Um, so whether it's you know, doing uh, uh, learning engagements like you are right now, uh, or, or working with a professional, there's quite a lot that can be done with inside the platform and uh, don't feel discouraged. Some of the stuff starts to become you know, uh, second nature as we, as we move on. So we're gonna jump into, rather than just explaining how this works, we're gonna look at two use cases for, for how you might want to integrate Google Analytics. We're gonna take a look at measuring fundraising campaigns and tracking marketing campaigns. So there's gonna be a lot that's shared between these two, but these just might be uh, use cases to say, hey, these are, are, are two of the things we're really trying to focus on. How, how can we best use Google Analytics to, uh, to help increase the effectiveness of this? So in order to do that, one thing before I pass it off to Kyle, I want to highlight is uh, UTM parameters. So these are urchin tracking mechanisms. I can't remember what the M is. I always call them UTM things. But this basically allows you to pass information into, into Google Analytics. So there's a couple of kinds here. You can take a look at these. But on, on a very basic level, this allows you to append special information to the back end of your links that will then filter into Google Analytics. So, um, you know, say uh, we're talking about one of those fundraising campaigns that's coming up next. You might put a campaign name here for Spring 2023 fundraising, and then you'll be able to go into Google Analytics and see, okay, here's all the traffic that originated from this specific link. Here's where they came from in an email. So you can start to have things in campaign. You can have multiple, you know, uh, uh, different sources in here. You can really fill these out. And this is something you don't need to set up in Google Analytics itself. If you just uh, send a link with this UTM parameters on the end, it's going to pass into Google Analytics automatically. So these are a really helpful way, especially if you're doing a lot of like marketing, maybe you have a lot of like, like a street team and they're, they're handing out you know, cards you can have and just uh, maybe in a QR code, you can bet a lot of these UTM parameters then understand exactly how well your, your street team cards are doing. Or say you have, you know, something in, in, in an email and you want to say, hey, this is the bottom button on the email and this is the top button. Which one's, you know, driving more, uh, more information to the website? You can add UTM parameters to those. That'll pass directly along into Google Analytics. Yeah. So how do we measure the success of these fundraising campaigns? So kind of real world examples, um, or more specific examples. 
First step is to set up your events. So making sure your donation landing page and your forms are all set up in, Google, in GA4, Google Analytics 4, so they get marked as conversions. So go through, get the event set up. Once you've got those pages in place, drop those pages in, drop the forms in there um, and get that set up so that you can start creating your reports. Um, get them created so that you can easily get weekly updates and you can subscribe to these updates as well. Um, these are really helpful, as I started mentioning earlier, uh, for things like sharing this with your board um, or sharing this with you know so, someone that's a little bit higher up in the company or or to go after some for, go after more uh, budget for advertising. You want to make sure you have your all that material tagged. So as Julian just mentioned, using those UTM parameters, a lot of times this some of this stuff will get in, injected automatically. So if you copy something from like a Facebook link, a Facebook ad or something like that, it'll automatically, it will start to append some of these things to it. If you use uh, tracking codes from common systems, it will allow you to add that. So if you use something like MailChimp or HubSpot, um, it will add certain UTM tags. So just make sure that you're, you've got those right tags, you're tracking those things or set up as part of your reporting. Um, that's really super helpful to see, you know, where these people are coming from and how these efforts are paying off. Uh, and then start using that data that you're you're seeing from the behavior flow, from um, from the where they're coming from, from the different sources and channels they're coming from, uh, and those scroll events to see your conversion rate, so that you can make changes on the website, and then prior to them coming to that website or that landing page, um, this is also a good opportunity for you to to address like any user experience issues. Get more granular. We really recommend looking at how how traffic comes and how um, behavior changes across different devices. You might see that you have a big drop off when it's on desktop. That's sometimes a cue that uh, either the page layout doesn't render correctly on desktop or, or, or vice versa on mobile, or maybe there is an, an error with, with um, you know, one of the engagements or something like that on one of those devices. So you look for those to be cues to say that something might not be working as expected, but also look for cues to see things are, you know, overperforming. Uh, and then apply that to um, you know future campaigns or other pages across your your site. And then track the success of these marketing campaigns. So I started to talk about this, I started to, to talk through this, but you know we're driving people to this these fundraising pages um, or to other campaigns. We we can use Google Analytics for as I was as we mentioned earlier to start tracking how that marketing is working. So having that consistent tagging. As I mentioned in for MailChimp or HubSpot, you know, not having disjointed tags. If there's a campaign name that's used throughout MailChimp, maybe through one of your um, your subscriptions or maybe through a list, um, carrying that consistent tagging through is going to help show, you know, which different source they might have come from. So they might have come from a MailChimp email, um, but or they or they might have come from like a a Facebook post or whatever, but ensuring we have the same tag across all those campaigns is going to help you track the effectiveness and then the granularity um, of the different efforts you're putting out there. You can do this by setting up a funnel report. So use that user journey uh, to, to build out a, a specific funnel report and see how people filter from you know, new users to conversions, but see where they're entering that funnel from. Uh, and then tagging your call to actions as a conversion so that same way we talked about tagging things on forms for fundraising, um, tagging a, you know, a button click or um, a form submission or clicking on an email address or a link um, or something that's going to drive them to like a third party site to register for an event um, or sign up to be a volunteer, making sure you do tag that as a conversion will show Kind of the full funnel and show you know how well something works how well user flow works um as people navigate throughout your site and live across your marketing ecosystem so some key takeaways from today before we start to jump into some questions uh first thing google analytics is free google analytics 4 is free uh it's a powerful tool uh really help you understand what's working how people are using your site how they're working using your apps your as julian mentioned things like your lms uh, and how they're interacting with you across your entire kind of marketing ecosystem and your different your different materials uh, if you use it effectively um, it, it'll allow you to make data-driven decisions so you can increase effectiveness and, and efficiency across these efforts and not just on like your website so 
don't think of it just as how's my website working. It's really how is everything working? My website being sort of the bottom of the funnel for those those tactics. Uh, and it offers basic information at a glance, like we mentioned. So easy, very easy to get set up, very easy to start tracking things, but then you can get very granular and do more complex reporting um, armed with some some, you know, some specifics on for your organization or your uh, different causes or that whatever um, your marketing efforts and things like that might be. So before we jump into questions, just, just want to quickly cover this. Maybe this will answer a lot of the questions I've seen throughout the chat. Uh, first and foremost, this is this what as we mentioned, this is this was recorded. We will share a copy of this um, recording as well as the copy of this deck, the PDF with all of you afterwards. So if you all join late, that's there for you as well. Um, there are a lot of questions on, you know, how can you help or, you know, how can I get help with these? How can I ask a question, have some specific questions answered? Um, we have a number of offerings on TechSoup that, that are certain, very much addressed to those questions or will address those questions, um, but very specific also to Google Analytics, Google Analytics, including a migration from Universal to Google Analytics 4. That can all be found on TechSoup's website. If you just go to their main page or one of their or any page that's got the, the navigation on it, you'll see uh, services drop down. You can select website services or digital marketing. You should find those there. We'll also include links to those um, in the follow up to this presentation. Um, one of the things that we found that works really well across nonprofit organizations is our website maintenance service. This is really just partner having a partner um, to keep your website running smoothly uh, so you don't have to really think about it. It's kind of it can be very hands off, but you will have a dedicated account manager to field incoming re field requests from your organization. That could be things like helping you answer questions on your Google, Google Analytics. It can be things like um, making sure that we're setting up, you know, conversions, events, things like that in your Google Analytics account, or it could be stuff like, you know, changing images, uploading blog posts, uh, troubleshooting errors, things like that across your website. So, as we said, we'll share links to this. Uh, the easiest way to get started with us or to have some questions answered would just be to book a consultation. So following this, you'll have links to the, that, that links right here on the website services on this PDF. And now we'll open it up through, for some questions. So we've got quite a few to go through here in the chat and in the Q&A. Um, so I think we'll, we'll just get started. Uh, I don't know if you want to pick one yeah. out. Yeah. I think some of them are, are similar. I'll just sort of start from some of the first ones that were answered. Um, you know, Mark and Adrienne are asking about, you know, if you have a platform or your website, if that affects anything, if you're trying to do multiple things. So for uh, Mark, for your question directly, he asks, um, is you have a, a website hosted by a particular provider. Uh, can Google Analytics work with any hosting provider? So with hosting, um, just a little bit of a nomenclature thing that tends to be for server-based websites. But if you talk about platforms like Squarespace or Rix or something like that, um, Google Analytics is going to work with any of them. So they don't necessarily care what your website is built with. You could be coding it on, you know, Notepad on your computer. As long as it's being served out to the internet, that's what it can address on. Um, the, the various ways that Google Analytics is going to integrate with your website is going to change depending on, on which, you know, website provider you use. But um, there should be options to integrate it in any way. The only limitation you might have is if, you know, depending if you have a very basic uh, website builder, you might not be able to add some of the, you know, specific button tags or, or maybe just configure a little bit differently. But 99% of the things in Google Analytics are going to work, you know, across any actual uh, website platform. For Adrian's question, you have a main site and a sister site. Um, are you saying to use one code or add each for each site? So you're going to have one property and that you're going to have your main account and then a Google Analytics property. And within that property, you're going to want to set up two data streams, one data stream for each, each website, one for the main, one for the sister. Those are going to filter into the same uh, Google Analytics property, and you, you'll be able to see the, the website data together. Um, uh, Omar asks, after 30 minutes of being idle and returning to the browser, or will the system count that as two different sessions? On a basic level, yes, there are some caveats to that, and that really depends on some sort of advanced configurations. But on a very basic level, yes, that will count as two different sessions. Um, Anne Marie has, has two in here. Um, any good online video resources that go more into the details of each of the tabs in Google Analytics? 
this is a bit tricky because Google Analytics 4 has been in development basically for, for a couple of years now. There's a lot of video content out there, but also, you know, this information is changing uh, fairly quickly. So it's going to be a matter of finding the most up-to-date information. Um, there, there is a lot of stuff out there. Um, none that sort of, I think, stands above uh, any of the rest right now. But uh, just sort of as new information comes out, Google itself also offers a very robust um, sort of documentation platform that will always give you the most up-to-date information for how to do things. And that sort of goes into the next question. Is there a one-on-one -on -one training we can request for help with Google Analytics? Yes, there is. Definitely sort of reach out to us. We can either help you migrate or just talk through some things or figure out how your website is, is going to work with Google Analytics. Another one here, how do you track a conversion that goes through QR code? Great question. So that's something where UTM parameters are going to be really helpful. So one of the downsides of UTM parameters is it takes a, a, a website URL like uh, google.com slash Julian, and you have, it adds a question mark, UTM underscore campaign, all this stuff. Um, and with that, sort of it's hard to maybe print it out uh, with, uh, you can either use a URL shortener like a bit.ly or some organizations either even uh, buy their own domains to create their own URL shorteners. But with the QR code, it's all packaged up in that dot matrix. So you're able to just say, hey, we're gonna append all that, all these UTM tags to say, this is you know, this flyer, this is sort of the, uh, the name of the flyer, this is sort of the, the time we're sending out, all that stuff. And you're able to put all that into UTM parameters. And then when somebody scans that with their phone, it will, it will then put all that information into Google Analytics. And so you'll be able to see all of that right there. That leads into an anonymous question we have. Do you just add slash UTM source to the end of an HTML link? Very close, but not quite. So it's not going to be a slash UTM source, UTM campaign, anything like that. It's going to come after a question mark. So question marks are like additional bits of information you can you know, send to your website for how people are interacting with it. Sometimes you might see in site search, you know, you type something into a search bar and it reloads the page with a question mark in your search query. You're going to want to use a tool to build these out. You can type out everything, you know, manually, but there is a tool. Um, it's from uh, GA Dev Tools, so it's, it's built by Google that'll help you sort of create this. So you'll put in your your main URL where you want to send somebody, and they'll say, "What's the campaign name?" You'll type that in. What's what's the you know the source? This is going in an email, doing this. You'll be able to type that all out, and it'll give you a link at the at the end, and then that way you can sort of paste that in there. And then finally, Tilly here. Uh, asks, can you talk through the process of moving from Universal Analytics to Google Analytics 4? Does data copy across? It's a bit of a complex question. Some configuration things uh, copy across, not all data. Data is from Universal Analytics is always going to live in that property. So it's going to stop collecting data on July 1st, or if you remove sort of the Universal Analytics tag before then, it'll stop collecting data there. It will always be available to, uh, to report on and, and see that information there. GA4 is going to start collecting new data. It's hard to sort of get those two to talk to each other, not impossible, but a little more difficult just because of the way they're collecting data. With the Google Analytics 4 being event-based, that really changes um, uh, the way things are, are looking. So it's no longer just a page view, it's a page view event. So um, there, there's a lot of caveats to that that I don't think we can really get into now, but it is sort of on a very basic level, uh, Google will sort of walk you through a wizard to change your uh, UA property into a GA4 one. It's just a matter of, of how exactly that's going to, uh, to integrate best with any individual configuration. Kathy asks, I'm not using anything fancy on my Google Analytics now. What is the minimum I need to do to use GA4? Will the preset reports be available automatically once GA4 is installed? I'll answer that in reverse. Um, the preset reports will be available automatically. Um, you'll have sort of an explore tab and a reports tab set up there. Depending on the, the option you set up, if you're using a wizard to set it up, it will show you slightly different views on that sidebar, but on the, on the most part, it will give you um, that, that information there. Um, so I'll just go down here. And in terms of you know, the minimum to, to get things set up, um, I would say that the easiest way, say you're using a WordPress site, Google uh, makes a plugin called Google Site Kit that allow you to sort of connect everything to your site right away. Um, and it'll walk you through setting it up and then also get it integrated in your site uh, very well. For uh, websites that maybe you're using a Wix or a Squarespace or, or uh, a, a different sort of maybe a, a landing page tool, um, you're going to want to start on the Google Analytics side and create your property there. And then it's going to give you two pieces of code to put in your site's header. 
So as long as you're able to access the, the header of your site or, or inject you know, a, a script somewhere, you'll be able to, to integrate it there. And that'll just get the data flowing into there and you can turn on the specific events and stuff you want in there. But once that data is in there, um, you'll have the information. And then that's sort of the technical setup side I mentioned in the beginning. The strategic side where you're getting you know, your custom reporting, saying things as conversions, maybe advanced events, things like that. Those are things you can do afterwards, but on a very basic level, just getting that data stream set up and then getting the actual code inserted onto your site. And then that's all the ones we have through the QA portion right now. I'm looking just in the, uh, in the chat section, pulling some things up here. Could you show how to access, create the behavior flow path and or path exploration report that you show? Yep, that's gonna be in the explore. And then uh, I believe it's free form. Uh, it's, but it's basically you're going to have a report that says path exploration. It's going to be one of your main options available. That's going to pull up, um, you know, all your pages. Um, it's going to start with an event. And that's one of the main differences between Universal Analytics and uh, Google Analytics 4. Is before you might start with a page view and then you track events all in that. With this, you have to start with an event and specify, hey, we want to look at all page view events and then how people are interacting with the pages after that. But uh, just the path exploration tool inside of the uh, explore option is going to get you right there. And how you create events, um, that's going to be uh, when you're on Google Analytics in the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see a gear. And that's where you're going you're gonna to spend a lot of time doing your setup in that gear section. You're going to be creating the properties, setting up your data streams. Um, and in there, you'll be able to say, OK, look at all our events, create custom events, or modify uh, existing ones. And it'll be in a, in a drop down in the second column you see. I um, mean, then from there, you know, in the tab just below that, you'll be able to mark some of those custom events as conversions and so. But on a very basic level, the gear uh, icon in the bottom left hand corner. Yep, and, and uh, Kyle put that, that UTM builder in the chat. That's going to be very helpful. And once you have Google Analytics set up, you can sort of use this tool and just start creating links. You're going to want to use some uniformity across all the things you're creating. But that's you don't need any additional configuration on the on the Google Analytics side. Just if people are visiting links that stuff, you can put it into uh, it'll, it'll go directly into Google Analytics. And will campaign URL builder work for Universal Analytics? Do we need to put the link in header or just the campaign link? So the campaign URL builder will work in Universal Analytics. You'll be able to see the way you're going to view the information is going to be a little bit different. And it is going to stop on July 1st. So I'll just give you that caveat. Um, but then do you need to put it in the header or just the campaign link? So with that campaign builder, you don't need to do any additional configuration once you have uh, Google Analytics set up. That's just going to be you know, adding extra information onto a link. So say you're, you're writing an email and you have your call to action at the bottom, maybe to your donate page. Instead of just putting your URL slash donate, you'll be able to put it in that, that longer link. And then that'll pass all that information directly into the platform. All right, I think that sort of gets us caught up with questions. Anything else for today? No, that was great, Julian. I, I usually the one that talks a lot. <laughs> you mean going through all that? Um, as Julian mentioned, you know, happy to walk you all through these different things. Uh, we'll follow up. You'll have our access to a form um, or to reach out to us directly. Um, to either request more information or um, you know, kind of request a consultation on Google Analytics or, or the website stuff as a whole. Um, but a lot, I think this, this I, we appreciate everybody joining us today. It's really meant to be kind of high level to give you, give you an idea of like how to scratch the surface and where to start from. Um, but there's a number of resources available directly through TechSoup. I would start with like the blog and we, we can share some um, in the FOP email as well to dive a little bit deeper into you know Google Analytics, getting it set up and, and customizing it for your uh, specific use cases. Great. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs>